I thought I would do this video here, it's most probably gonna be a pretty quick repair. So here I'm working on an Amiga 4000 and, or yeah, well, I'm done working on it now. I'm in the phase of testing it and everything seems to be working fine, except for this floppy disk drive here. Uh, it seems to be having a problem and uh, the symptoms are that, uh, well, it seems to be having a problem reading disks. Surprise, surprise. But, well, when I put a disk in there, sometimes the icon pops up uh, correctly, as it should, and um, sometimes it doesn't. And, well, when it does pop up, then um, often it just takes a few seconds and then it disappears again. And I immediately could recognize the symptoms um, and I immediately started to um, uh, suspect that the switch in here uh, that is being triggered when the disk is um, put in there, uh, you know, when, when a disk is inserted, then there is a switch here that is being pressed down and that is how the disk drive and the computer knows that a disk has been inserted. So um, I suspect that that um, little switch or push button has gone bad somehow and here I have a program running called drive tester and I can verify my theory using this program so I'm gonna do just that and um, to start with I can start the motor in the drive by uh, by first selecting motor here and then uh, drive select there and uh, now the disk is running in, uh, it's uh, spinning in the drive. I have a disk inside the floppy disk drive now. So, okay, uh, now the thing is, this change signal here, disk change, it should latch when uh, uh, a step is being performed. So after disk has been inserted, this um, disk change signal, it's not gonna latch immediately. It's gonna latch after a step has been performed. So if I do that, it doesn't matter which direction I'm ste stepping here, uh, but, well, let's choose this direction. Uh, okay, so when I, yeah, okay, now we could see that the change uh, signal here, disk change, it latched, but if I just slightly move um, the disk with my finger, just I'm just gonna move it just slightly like this, just gonna touch it here on the front, okay? So I'm gonna do that now. And then we can see, let's see here. Yeah, okay. Do you see that? Okay. So now it took it as the disk is out. Like I, I, I ejected the disk, but I didn't eject the disk. All I did was like this. I just touched here. So there is obviously something wrong with that switch that is uh, telling the drive that the disk is in uh, uh, the disk drive. So I'm going to open up the disk drive and have a look at that switch and, uh, well, that um, if I can fix the switch then that should solve the problem. So here's the disk drive and I have already taken the front off there and here to the left we can find the two uh, momentary push switches and to the right we can find one of them and um, if we now take a look at the disk this is uh, a double density disk but uh, if this was a high density disk as you probably know then there would be a hole here. So it's easy to see then, if I put the disk in here, that uh, this sensor to the right is uh, for uh, the high density or double density select. And uh, to the left here, it's easy to see, you know, if I put the disk in, it's easy to see that the left switch is um, sensing the right protect. So this switch here, to the right of these two, that one, that would be the one that is sensing uh, that uh, the, the disk is inside the drive. Now, um, I don't really know if there is uh, something wrong with uh, this switch or if it's uh, just the mechanism that is not pushing down the disk uh, enough, making the switch actually switch over like that. Because, you know, if this mechanism is kind of loose and unstable, then it's not going to work that well. Because the disk is not going to get pushed down enough in order for the switches to trigger there. So, um, I'm going to have a look at this and see if this problem has to do with the switch or if it's the mechanism that is not pushing the disk down properly.
So the switch is obviously working as it should, which is good news, because if it wasn't working, it would be pretty difficult to repair this disk drive. You know, it's not like I have switches of this special type just lying around in my drawer. But um, it is triggering, we could see that. So and that means that um, the disk is not being pushed down far enough towards the switches in order for them to trigger. And I can only assume that if um, this problem, uh, if we have this problem here with this switch, then we're gonna have the same problem with the other switches if the disk is not being pushed down far enough towards the switches in order for them to trigger. So um, uh, it's just that I haven't tested this with other switches. I have only tested this with this switch. Uh, but probably the other switches are gonna have the same problem. Uh, now, uh, how do I, how do we fix something like this? Well, I guess I could just do a really lazy quick fix here by extending these pins and this one also so that they will uh, uh, trigger more easily even though the disk is not being pushed down that far uh, but that is pretty much the cheating way uh, so the proper way here is to uh, check um, the mechanism and see if it's possible to have the disk being pushed down further towards the switches so uh, I'm gonna do that, I'm gonna open up the cover and have a look at this and here we have the disk drive with the cover off. It was a bit dusty inside, but I easily took care of that by using an air blower like this. Now here's the problem. When I put a disk in there, it doesn't want to lock on properly. Okay, so now it should lock on, but it's not doing that properly. Now take a look what happens when I push down here with my finger. Okay. Now it should be doing that by itself, but it's not. So why is it not doing that? I don't have a clue. Not yet anyway, but I will do some further investigation here and get back to you. Okay, back here again. So I had a quick look at it and I very much suspect that it has to do with these two springs. We have one there and one there. And it might be that they have lost their tension. So um, I'm gonna try taking them out of there and see if I can find uh, spare ones in my drawer. This type of spring here is the only one I had of the right size. And here's the old one. I couldn't just replace the old one with the new one because uh, the new one isn't as strong as the old one. So that wouldn't work. So uh, instead I took the new one and hooked it up in parallel with the old one. Uh, hopefully that will work. So now I'm gonna put the drive back together and have another go at it in Workbench. Here's the disk drive back in one piece, and by the way, if anyone is interested, it's a Chino drive, model FB-357A. So uh, I have it hooked up to the Amiga, and um, the power's on, and I'm ready to try it out once more. So I'm gonna put the disk in here. Okay, and let's take a look here again at the screen. So here I have this program running again. So I'm gonna start the motor. Okay, now it's uh, spinning the disk. And let's uh, do a step here. So uh, when I step, then uh, this indicator should uh, light up. So let's see. Yeah, it does. And um, if I now poke around here with my finger and let's see if I can make it release that uh, latch there no it's uh, much more stable now it's working I'm back here again after doing some more testing off camera. I tried to read disks, write to disks, format disks, both double density and high density, and everything seemed to work quite well. Well, except for the few times when I happened to put a bad disk in the drive, but I cannot really blame the disk drive for that. So uh, the drive seems to be back in working order again. And also, now when I try to poke around here, I cannot really make that switch not triggering anymore. So uh, I guess I managed to uh, fix that problem. And uh, that would be the end of this little repair video. 
it uh, came to be quite a short video this time but I hope you liked it anyway so uh, I will talk to you guys later thanks for watching